Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with a match analysis. I haven't done one of these in a little while. This is going to be a game between Kloon and Rymark on Into Battle. This map is one that. There we go. Sorry about that. This map is not one of my favorite maps. It's a little bit interesting, though. Mostly aesthetically, just because of the very obvious elevation lines. But anyway, the map overall, 1.9 everywhere, so basically plus 2. Pretty standard. And you have a standard cluster in the northwest and the southeast, as well as the northeast and southwest. Typically, players will start in northeast to southwest. Those you see, Rymark is actually starting in the northwest. This is unusual, but not unheard of. There is a ramp that leads up to this island on both sides, or not island, the raised area here, the plateau here on both sides. And there's also another plateau here, which only has a raised area along the back side, along the side closest to the edge of the map. As well as a plateau over in the northeast and southwest corners, but those are very rarely used. You might see these for wind once in a while, but they don't have any metal on them. No. And they're not in the way. Whereas this plateau gets used all the time, and this plateau in the middle, this is pretty much where you get massive points of contention. Oftentimes fights will break out around this, the ramp leading up to it. Either, either one. Occasionally you'll see fights break out in the edge between them, if the two players are starting out in the corners. Starting in opposite corners, this pass between them will be a very heated area of the map. Otherwise, it'll usually be either, either one of these larger ramps. So yeah, holding these is important. Anyway, that is pretty much the explanation for the map itself. It's a fairly simple map. As you can see, it... The only deceptive part is that it looks like it is a vehicle-focused map. Well, it is not. It's actually particularly useful for bots, because it is flat, it does have a good way of getting around. I shouldn't say it isn't. It actually can be, it's just this area here, because of these ramps, vehicles have to be careful. This plateau is a tricky thing to get up to, but you can. You definitely can. It's not a problem. It's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let us begin. I've just been wasting time. So, Rymark, starting with Jump Bot Factory in the northwest side of the map, Clone starting with the Shieldbot Factory, eastern side of the map. So Jumpbot versus Shield is a little interesting. Used to be the case, for anyone who remembers from I think about a year ago now, fire could actually penetrate shield, so pyros were very powerful against shieldbots. That has long since changed, by the way. That that no longer is the case. It has not been the case for I think a year now. Shields do not get penetrated by fire. I, they get damaged differently by fire than they do by normal weapons. I think they get damaged more, but they don't get penetrated by it. So shields are actually effective this time around. Well, it's in the last year. So if you are thinking in terms of old 0k, that's not going to apply. Anyway, Clone is going for early... Well, early Raider, assuming opposite corners and turning out to be wrong, while Rymark, also assuming Clone is going to start at the typical location and is correct. The early rating should be fairly effective, though... I think with Pyros, they actually aren't that effective against Bandits. Against Glaives, they're really effective, but Bandits... First off, you have you have the shield here, as can be clearly seen. It's very effective, but also just looking at their health bars. Two Bandits would have been death to that Pyro, partly because of the Convict Shields, no doubt about that. But Bandits actually scale really well against Pyros. And it's a little bit tricky to use. You have to be careful when using Pyros against Bandits. Even against Glaives, you have to be careful, but against Bandits, it's doubly so, because Bandits are tougher and they are stronger. Glaives, their main difference is that they regenerate health automatically. It's a big difference, but it doesn't matter in the middle of combat. Clone having pushed that away, focusing a bit more on expanding. Rymark focusing a lot more on getting power infrastructure, while Clone just making sure Rymark hasn't set up along here. I think Clone might have been suspecting Rymark may have gone along the north side. I mean, they knew that Rymark came in from the north area, but they might have suspected that Rymark went around trying to trick them, like went up this ramp around here and then around back, just to give Clone the idea that Rymark was actually over in the southwest side of the map, or sorry, over in the northwest side of the map, when Rymark would actually have been in the southwest side of the map, but in reality, Rymark really is in the northwest side of the map, so Clone I think, just out-bluffed themselves. But it's not a bad idea to double-check. Rymark may have used that one pyro as cover for, well, actually, they did use that pyro as cover for the Freaker, but the Freaker is expanding closer to home. While Clone, on the other hand, is not expanding quite as quickly, focusing much more on defense, getting their static defense up considerably faster. Rymark just has the one laser turret, Clone has two defenders and a Lotus. And another Pyro, Band Battle, and this, this Pyro is dead. This Pyro is dead. 
Actually, no, it's not. That was nice micro, though. Good, good jump micro from a Rymark, because Rymark, I should point out, is a big jump jet expert. If there's anyone outside of Explosive Gulda who just is an expert with everything, who is a jump bot expert, it is Rymark. Rymark has spent a lot of time practicing the jump bot factory, really loves the jump bot factory, has, as far as I know, perfected as much as pretty much anyone but Gulda has. So, this is. Despite the yellow values, it's actually going to be fairly even, just because Rymark knows the jump bot factory inside out and backwards. Clone, on the other hand, continuing to, switch, to stick to bandits. Bandits are a good choice. They are powerful against pyros, and if puppies come up, the bandits can survive. Glaives can't? Actually, you know, bandits can't either, never mind. Puppies are five, 400 damage a shot. Yeah, 407 damage a shot. My mistake. So bandits will also die. Actually, glaives fare better in this regard because glaives are cheaper. Bandits being 75 each, Glaives are 65 each, Puppies are each 50. But Glaives can kite more easily, so this is going to be a little bit trickier than, say, against Cloakie. However, even then, Rymark not able to deal a huge amount of damage. Gets rid of one Metal Extractor, not a bad thing to do, they are fairly even at this point. While Clone is setting up... See, this is the point where I would start to expect Clone to be thinking about... Actually, Clone is going for Thuglaw. Clone does have Thuglaw in their queue, which is exactly what I was about to say I expected. Rymark going for pure Pyro, which... That can work in large numbers against Thug. Although against Outlaw, that's not going to work out so well. Moderator would be a likely option, but Moderator's a little bit tricky. Moderator's having a very high... They have a very high... Well... High delay weapon, a low rate of fire weapon. They rely heavily on alpha damage. The problem, of course, is that shields eat that. The shields simply absorb the alpha, so if you don't have sustained damage, you can't really break through the shields to deal any meaningful damage. So moderators aren't easy to use, but at the same time, in every other way, they're the natural counter to the thug. Rymark, however, is not going for that. Going for a jack instead. This is a much better idea. Although a little bit risky, because thugs do rely on their powerful yet slow bullets. So jacks can have a harder time evading that than, say, pyros will. But honestly, I think Jacks are just fine. They have a huge amount of health. They'll be able to tank the damage. And Rymark nicely microing these powers around. Unfortunately, they are going to die. One of them's going to die. The other one might not. Going around the back, so Rymark will be able to get rid of Clone's radar. Clone right now does have a good idea of what's going on on the northeast side of the map. Well, had. I mean, it's going to be... Oh, never mind! Of course, the defender. I totally missed that. My mistake. And on the other hand, Rymark has... Very little knowledge of what's going on inside Clone's base. Rymark had actually not yet built not built a radar up here. They have a radar up in the western side of this plateau, but they have no radar further in, so they really don't know what Clone is up to. Clone, on the other hand, is... Well, going for Thuglaw. There's really nothing unpredictable about this at all. Clone is doing exactly what you'd expect a shield bot player to do five minutes into the game. Their raiders are getting destroyed by the Pyros. They're... Next option is to go for assaults. Well, assault riot. The other option, of course, would be to go. F well, rogues aren't really an option. Rogues would be more of an option if moderators came out ish. Over sumos was coming out, and that would also be a good point for rogues to come in. But Rymark, this is what they're spending their money on. They're going heavily for sumos. They are also expanding to the southwest. Now, clone at this point, they are going to harass at the southwest. They're just. They are double-checking. This is always a good thing to do. You always want to check, because Clone actually doesn't know there's anything here. See, from their point of view, they don't know if there's anything up in this metal extractor. But they're going to check, because, well, it's prudent to do so. And they are going to find the Pyro. This is going to be a narrow victory for the... No, a narrow defeat for the Pyro. Although the Bandit isn't going to... I don't think the Bandit's going to survive to see it. No, the Bandit will not survive. It does survive, however, to see there is a Defender, so there is a Constructor. So it would be reasonable to assume that there is, in fact, a... Metal Extractor being built here, so that, that Rymark is taking this part of the map. They're establishing a bit of a beachhead along the south side of the map on this plateau, and Clone now knows this. Clone also realizes that Jacks are particularly useful against Thugs. Or whatever I may have said earlier, Jacks just tank. Yeah, they get hit, but they have 5,000 health. They can get hit. They can afford to get hit. So at this point, Rymark focusing very heavily on the heavy units. Sumo, Jack... We don't see anything left in the queue, so it's hard to really guess, but I'm guessing, if I had to guess, which I do, Pyro, and then more Jacks. And there's Pyro, probably more Jacks afterwards. 
Clone, on the other hand, is continuing to build up Thug Law, while also getting a few... This is a really good idea. Getting the Racketeers is a wise choice, though at this point... I don't think they know about the Sumo. Good read, though. They know about the Jack, and the Jack, I think, gets disabled by Disarm. I'm fairly certain it does. We will find out in this game, though, whether or not it does, because that's... That's gonna come up. I'm fairly certain that it does, though. And Rymark is actually just going for Pyro into Freaker. Continuing to build up the southwest side of the map while Clone... At this point, what does Clone know? Clone knows very little about the southwest side of the map. Has started to build up the southeast side of the map, so Clone is actually way ahead in economy. Rymark, as we can see, is half the economy of Clone. But a lot of that military, in the, well, 4.9 military, but a lot of the military is in the sumo. 1.7k in the sumo. Clone now just becoming aware of it too. Or very nearly now. At the same time, consolidating the south side of the map. So Clone just now finds out about the sumo. So at this point, if you look at Clone's forces, what do they have? They have like, half a dozen bandits along the south side of the map. They can attack. It would be really risky that they don't actually know what's here. So it would be a bad idea to attack. They're just setting up for defense because they want to get... They want this one convict to be able to go down here and build up the metal extractors. They also have the southeast, so they want to make sure to protect that. However, they do have some lotuses. Gloon also has quite a lot of defensive structures built up. Rymark has a line of defenders, but not much beyond that. A bit a bit in the south, but not, otherwise not much. Clone is playing like Clone. Rymark is playing the mobile game. So Rymark right now, they have some Racketeers... That's their biggest thing they have right now, is the Racketeers. Racketeer Thug Law, that's about a quarter map south of... Well, I guess... There's a measurement unit, I believe this is an 8x8 map, whatever. Quarter map, map south of Rymark Sumo. So the Sumo's gonna have free reign over here for about 30 seconds. Now, Clone at this point, what they can, they can pull this up, they probably should. And they are, in fact, doing that. The, however, the Racketeers are probably gonna be their biggest asset. Sumos aren't that vulnerable to them, though. They can still jump, I believe, even when disarmed. So it's not like their biggest weapon is gone. They can still jump on things. Which is exactly what's happening. And Clone is actually going to probably lose this radar here. Jump has become available, and what will Rymark attack? Rymark, yep, goes for the radar and the solar plants, so Clone loses a bit of information about that northern pass. But honestly, not all that much. Clone didn't actually lose that much knowledge about what's going on. There isn't much happening already. So now that Clone, Clone is pushing away Rymark's Sumo, I... Yeah, Sumo just needs time to jump and doesn't have the gravity beams. So this Sumo, by the way, for those of you not familiar, the Sumo in this version, which has been the case for a few months now, has gravity beams. They're basically portable Newtons. This Jack, however, is also in here, and this is where Rymark... This is where we'll find out whether or not Jacks are actually able to hit one disarmed, and the answer is no, they cannot. And this Jack is trying to retreat from the looks of it, but unfortunately... No, it's not. It's... Why is it not retreating? The Jack has seven seconds of disarm left, but yet it is running into the bandits. I don't think Rymark is paying attention to this Jack at all. Now, at the same time, Rymark's deciding, okay, I'm going to just drop that, go to the south, and attack what I can. Rymark does actually know there's a lot here. They know that there's an economy sub here, they know that there were units there, which were going north to try to help protect. The Jack did die, by the way, as was pretty obvious. Did decide to go north. But this is where... And the bandits are really proving their worth. Pyro is doing their best, jumping around, but honestly, bandits are really scary. So, went down from an even number, actually, four Pyros and eight bandits to one Pyro alone. Bear in mind, Pyros cost 220, Bandits cost 75, so that made cost, and that more than made cost for Clone. And Clone is actually a bit ahead in the army game now. And that was, I mean, the loss of a Jack and the loss of several Pyros for a few Bandits, that was about it, really. And at this point, Rymark, unfortunately, not bothering to check the Southwest. Admittedly, one Pyro would not be able to do it. And they don't have anything really set up, they, they have no infrastructure set up to attack the Southwest. Sorry, the southeast. They have the southwest, my mistake. They have nothing to attack the southeast with. Their factory is on the opposite corner of the map completely, so getting down there is almost impossible. Well, Clone on the other hand, Clone trying to push forward, but there's not much they really have here. I mean, they're moving into the Racketeers. They have Racketeer Thug Law. That is scary, but the thing is, the Sumo can jump. And these things are clumsy. That's the one thing about Jump Bot Shield Bot. 
Sumo's jump on shields, which is why Ramark is going for shield Sumo. I surprised I didn't notice this before, but yes. This is why this is the case. There is an air switch from Clone, which is a good idea. Help to get rid of this Sumo, but the Sumo is just going to be able to jump on everything. Smashing Brothers Army and allowing the Jax some free reign too. The Jax can just come in here and start tearing apart everything. There is disarm missiles, but the Sumo has so much health, it takes a while. So at this point, Clone doesn't have a whole lot of options. Think about it, Clone has now Ravens. Bombing out the southwest side of the map, not a bad idea. There's not much in the way of anti-air defenses. Rymark is getting an air switch as well, which would be great for hitting the southeast. If they were aware of the southeast, that would be the time to hit them and the things to hit them with. It would cut off Clone. I mean, Clone has a massive economic advantage. They've had it the entire game, and yet the military is actually fairly even. Rymark's been quite cost-effective, despite that one pyro and bandit fight. Rymark has actually been very cost-effective. Rymark's been making sure to keep units alive, keep clones units dead. The sumo has actually been doing quite... This is the same sumo as before, by the way. It's actually quite cost-effective that way. So, clone right now, they have... Well, they have the option of continuing to go Thuglaw. They could try to go Thuglaw Felon, but that, of course, runs into massive problems because Felons are weak against heavy units. They drain all the shields, the unit doesn't die. So, you ultimately lose your firepower and defenses in exchange for nothing. So going for light units is not a bad idea. However, going for light units is also tough against the sumo. Air is a good choice. Using the ravens to hit the sumo will be quite effective to get rid of it. However, the thing is, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, one other option Clone has is to try to go for roaches. Set them up strategically so that Rymark comes in, because Rymark is going high mobility. We can kind of tell that there's not a whole lot of defenses, and Clone can probably tell that too, because jump bots typically go for that. Although, Clone... But they must realize that Rymark isn't that mobile. Like, Rymark has placeholders. They have placeholders and jacks. That's their backbone of their army. Very few pyros, no puppies. Rymark's not that mobile, so roaches would actually be fairly useful. They'd just be able to wait a little while until everything walked in, because it's going to just take a while to march in, and then explode. That's no, That is one option. Another option would be to, I suppose, go heavy on the bandits, and then try to kite around. No, clone just used their micro abilities. Let's see what they go for. But Clone is going... They're going to make their best effort to get rid of this sumo, but they really got to retreat. And they are retreating with some of the thugs. The outlaw, however, staying in there, trying to slow things down. Dealing what damage it can, but it's not going to last too long. Still... I mean, Clone... Did a bit of damage there, but... Oh, a Sneaky Pete build. Okay, this is going to be interesting. A Sneaky Pete is being built up. Now, that we don't see very often. But it does suggest roaches because Sneaky Pete, well, not so much Sneaky Pete, but Eraser, which Sneaky Pete can morph into. Eraser plus Roach is a highly underused and very powerful strategy. I'm actually surprised how little used it is, but yeah, you don't see it very often. People don't tend to build Sneaky Pete to use to sneak roaches under it. But if you do that, you basically have the ability to bomb anywhere on the map without really any anything getting in the way. I mean, everything's cloaked, and the roaches get in and blow up, and the biggest weakness of roaches is being able to approach. Roaches cannot approach, and yet if you throw in the Sneaky Pete, now you got a free approach. Everything works. Ramark over, they did go for heavy air control, so Clone's air strategy is not going to work out too well. They've already lost two Ravens as a result of trying, and they'll probably want to keep the rest of them back. And in fact, Rymark's going to move in, getting rid of as many Ravens as they can. This, well, there's a Vandal up, but this might not be a suicide mission yet. The Sneaky Pete is up. And I don't believe Rymark, no, Rymark can't see it. It's cloaked. However, if they can see units coming in and out of being cloaked. Yeah, like this Vandal here. They might suspect, actually, they can see it now as it is going to morph. And Rymark did spot that, so Rymark is going to be well aware that, or at least can be well aware, may not actually be well aware. Yeah, they're not, it's not ghosted properly. So they might be aware that Rymark, sorry, that Clone is coming up with an Eraser. Which means rogue, uh, roaches, not rogues. Eraser rogue would probably not be that useful. It might work okay, but I don't know. Eraser roach. Eraser roach, that is what's going to be a problem. And Rymark continuing with the slower units. Continuing with the Jax, continuing with the Sumo, mostly with Jax, Jax and Freaker. Probably just, yeah, increasing 
production, increasing reclaim. I was thinking to have to repair as well. I'm surprised Reimark is not bringing in a bunch of re Freakers to repair these units as they go in. I mean, this Jack is almost dead, too. Now, a few Freakers coming in here would be very handy. But, as it stands, that Eraser is up. The Roach, first Roach is up. Second one under production, and that is exactly what Cologne is going for. And just point out at this point, Reimark is about even for military and is actually pushing in pretty hard into Cologne's territory. Cologne also did continue to go for Thug Law at the same time. They did keep that up, so at least they weren't just relying on pure Roach, but yeah, they that is still pretty powerful. Three Roaches are kind of coming here, and they should be able to take care of the Sumo right now! Well, not quite. Got rid of one of the Jacks, nearly killed the Sumo. And Thug Law coming in here to try to finish it off. However, Jack coming in, it, I mean, they kind of know where the Eraser is. I'm not sure if Reimark knows where the Eraser is. If Reimark could find that Eraser, that would shut this entire thing down, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Reimark is instead far more focused on getting rid of the Thug Law ball, which is not honestly going to work out that well. Or, never mind, it isn't going to work out very well, my mistake. Well, okay, it's going to work out well until the Roaches come in and blow up yet another Jack. To point out, Jack's cost... 600 roaches cost 150 each. So that's 450 metal to kill a 600 metal unit. A worthy trade. As we can see, Rymark's military value has also oh, lost the sumo. Massively plummeted. They have 2k lower military. No, 3k lower military than Kroon. They have about half the military. They've finally gotten some reclaims so they can get the economy up, but otherwise. Yeah, and the south side has been taken. So Rymark at this point, they are in trouble. And right now. Consider what they have. So they know there's an eraser on the map. Or they should, anyway. They know that roaches are coming around. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, when you know they're cloaked units, the best option is to go for really light units, which in the case of Jumpbot Factory would be puppies, and just screen, go around the entire map, or at least especially where you suspect cloaked units to be, and try to find them. Just run into them, or get close to them. You'll decloak them, and then you'll hit them. Glaze, puppies, darts, dirtbags, or bandits, really. The dirtbags will... No, bandits are a better option. But yeah, if you find if you have fast, cheap units. Pyros are not a good option for this. Puppies are. However, Reimark not going for that. But Reimark instead going for Pyros, which is a curious choice. But unfortunately, I believe one which will probably end up with some massive problems. I don't really see that working. I mean, if the Pyros are actually... Well, the Pyros were to go far south, try to push down this area, take out the south, go from southeast to north, but they aren't doing that. They're, in fact, going straight in the center. And they do manage to disarm one Roach before it gets out of the Eraser field, but still, they don't seem to be looking for the Eraser, which is, I mean, like I said, not the Pyro's job. That is a job for puppies. And Kroon as well trying to get rid of the Sumo, which is not going to be successful. But yeah, that's a job for puppies. The job for Pyros is taking care of this. Taking care of this. Taking care of this. Taking care of all the expansions in the southeast corner of the map. Killing Clone's economy, and then from there allowing Rymark to get the military advantage and win. Rymark, however, does not appear to be interested in going for that, while Kloon is very interested in going for, basically, a wall breach with these Roaches. Cloaked Roaches coming in, and there are a lot of defenders to fight against. I mean, my goodness, there's a lot of defenders. Like, nine or so defenders, which is basically impossible to just tank through, or very difficult to tank through. But with Cloaked Roaches, that will be hand. Although, it looks like the Cloaked Roaches are not going to... Okay, some of them got spotted out too early, blowing up the entire lot. But at the same time, that's half of the defenders. The Eraser probably should have been a bit further north, though. But still, half of the defenders just got destroyed. Now it's actually feasible for a Thug Law Ball to break in with low casualties. Low of any casualties. Vandal support as well. Clone has actually... Clone has basically been going for very heavy ban Vandals. We can see like, Clone's entire queue right now. So, Roaches on Alt-Click. Thug, Outlaw, Racketeer, and some Bandits, along with some Vandals. So, massive mix. Like, three... Three to three Bandits to Vandals, and then two to three Thugs to Bandits, with one to three Outlaws to Bandits. Interesting ratios. I... I agree with them. Yeah, if you, especially when you're considering the amount of heavy units that have been coming out. 
Rymark really does want to make sure that they're not completely... They, they want to hedge their bets, really. They want to hedge the bets on Raider units because they want to be able to deal with these Pyros should the need arise. Sorry, not the Pyros. The thugs deal with the Pyros pretty well. They want to deal with Sumos and Jacks pretty well. I mean, the Roaches help a lot with that too. But still, at this point, Rymark is the one on the back foot. Although, I mean, Rymark, surprisingly, they could attack the southeast if they wanted to. And I don't think they're even thinking about it. They are, however, sending puppies out. There we go. That's the scouting. Of, well, sort of talking about. It looks like they're just being set into a line. That would be the scouting I was talking about if it weren't for the fact that they seem to be doing nothing. Which is not surprising given the sheer number. I mean, Rymark is aware of these lotuses. And given the sheer number of lotuses, it is no surprise that Rymark is a little bit timid about going for them. So Clone is just turtling up at the front lines. Got their economy set up, rebuilding as well along the south side. Now their end game, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like just throwing roaches in to try to do another breach, and then I suppose from there, Thug Law. Like breach into Thug Law Racketeer. Just make sure nothing can hit them. Roach is coming in, and Clone, Clone is aware of these radar dots. They know that there's something here, and they are going to blow up the roaches on the puppies, which will be a bit of a waste. However, the puppies do not end up finding the eraser. That is the bigger tragedy for Rymark. They did not find the eraser. That has been giving Clone a massive lead. I mean, the thing is, that eraser, if that goes down, and actually, Clone is running out of energy, so it very soon will. If that goes down, Clone has nothing. Or very little. They're about on par with Rymark at this point. They have very little. They have no easy way in. The sumos are kind of skewing that number, but still. Like I said, sumos just, they slam on the shields. They break the shield buzz that way. As we as we see right now, I mean, it just deals a lot of damage. Especially when the knocks them away, deals even more damage. And the shield bots are gonna be clumped up. That's how shield bots work. However, the Roach, the Eraser Roach, that has been a boon for Clone. That has really forced Rymark to, put, to pull back. I mean, they've lost a lot of Jacks. They lost about half a dozen Jacks and a couple sum a Sumo, at least. I think only one so far. They're about to lose another one to Bombers. While, well, once again, losing more puppies to Roaches, I'm just I'm surprised how incurious Rymark is. I mean, okay, it's not incuriosity so much as they are worried about the Lotuses. These Lotuses are a threat. If they can be done away with, then Rymark would have no problem getting over to the Eraser. I mean, actually, at this point, the racer is out of range, but then Rymark would have to go around the lotuses, and they have to actually know where the lotuses are, and admittedly they do, but they have to know where the lotuses are, get around the lotuses, then get over to the eraser, which they don't know where it is. So they don't know where to look, but they can reasonably assume the eraser is near the front lines, or likely to be near the front lines from time to time. So I'm just surprised Rymark has not been trying to screen more. They have once again been going heavily for Jax, getting four more Jax, getting Heavy Tank as well for Reapers. Rymark focusing this entire game on very heavy units, which has not gone well. I mean, I realize Roaches don't deal that much damage, but you get enough of them, especially when they're cloaked like this, especially when they can just move around with impunity. That being the biggest thing, the fact that they have no concern, if they can just go around the map, they don't care. They just hit things, and those things just die. The fact that that's the case means it's really easy, it's remarkably easy for Clone to just tear apart anything Rymark comes in with. And Rymark has to respect that, and Rymark, I'm not sure if they totally do. They are getting rid of the Lotuses, they, I think they are now trying to scream for the Eraser, but Jax are not the units to do that with. Especially as the Roaches come in to get rid of more Jax, although admittedly one of the Jack corpses does smack the Caretaker down, so that will reduce the reclaim, but still destroying all but one of the Jacks of that group. And the last one was so heavily damaged that a handful of bandits can get rid of it. And the Reaper forced back thanks to Disarm. Puppies finally moving in, having no concern over these Lotuses, but unfortunately not finding the Eraser once again. And that Jack also not finding the Eraser. It's kind of hard to tell where the Eraser is. I mean, there is a bit of a hint if you can see where units are decloaking. You can kind of get an idea of the range, like the radius, and you think, okay, well, it's in a circle around that unit somewhere. Or if it's, like, it's a bit hard though. If you see some units decloaking in a row, you know it's moving away. But yeah, finding the eraser, it's really by inference. And at this point, Clone, thanks to that roach, thanks to getting rid of those jacks, which was a huge, that was really 2,000 metal investment. Getting rid of that investment was a big deal, and that's where Roach Eraser is huge, and I'm very surprised we don't see it more often. That's pretty much the reason, actually, that's the entire reason I wanted to cast this game. 
I know, I was, I was feigning ignorance because I actually did want to show just how powerful Roach Eraser is. I do, when I do match analyses, I will check the game over a few times just to get an idea of what's going on so I know what happens. Just so it's easy to analyze, so it's easier to talk about things that happen, and it's... This game was Roach Eraser won it. Clone turned it around because of that. Reimark actually had quite a lot of firepower and would have had even more. The Jacks were a good idea. The Jacks and Zuma were a great idea, but for the Roaches. But for the Roaches, Clone had the perfect counter to that. Because the Roaches are quicker than Jacks, and with the Cloaking, the Jacks can't really... The Jacks can't screen for the Eraser. So by the time the Roaches pop up, the Jacks are dead. Puppies can screen for the Eraser, but it's a little bit tricky because they have to go through defenses, but that's still... You know, with 30 or 40 puppies, that probably would have been doable. And 30 or 40 puppies would have been cheaper than 5 jacks. I'm not kidding. Or at cost. Like, for, it's... I think jacks are... I think... Worth 500. 600, sorry. No, it's actually higher. Yeah, 5 jacks at 3,000. That's equivalent to 60 puppies. Without using reclaim to pay for them. That is... An immense cost, and if they had done that, they probably would have been able to find the Eraser, and would have been able to kill the Eraser, thus reversing the tides once again. That was Reimark's real big hope, was getting rid of the Eraser, or taking out the Southeast, and taking out all this economy. If they managed to take out all the economy and distract Clone from this front line, that would have probably also been useful. I mean, they would have had to been fearful of a counterattack, but especially once they got rid of one of the... That was an earlier Thug Law Ball. Once they got rid of that, if they had directed their efforts to getting rid of the Southeast, it would have been risky. They would have been out of position with a few of their units. But had they done it right, they would have been able to tear apart the entire southeast, especially once they had hawks, especially when they could have just sent one out, out here to scout. Just get the lay of the land, figure out where to attack. Because the angle that which they attacked would have actually made a huge difference. They would have avoided the lotuses if they picked the right angle. Would have had only about five lotuses to deal with. Now if they had sent half a dozen puppies, sorry, half a dozen pyros, it would have been one pyro left and all the lotuses dead, and the entire base dead. And a few more metal extractors. That would have been easily 12 metal per second that Clone would not have had, that Rymark would have effectively over them, because at that point they were even. So, good demonstration of why Eraser Roach is very powerful, and also possibly a situation where attacking along the sides is always a good idea. Surprisingly, I mean, Clone unsurprisingly was doing that. Clone was attacking the sides, they were attacking the south. Clone does that a lot. They don't go for the main base unless they're sure they can win. And in this map, it's a little bit tricky because these plateaus here. They are kind of main base, but kind of not. They're more side than main base, but when your opponent's main base is right next to them, it's a little bit tricky to, to justify what they are. However, I would still call them side. They're far enough away that they are really an expansion. They are not attacking the main base. The main base is this area here, or if they built here, this area here. Which is why the southwest is more popular. The main, what you could consider the main base, is considerably larger, and also doesn't have these cliffs overseeing it that artillery could just set up on if it wanted to. Or defenses could be set up on. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.